This video is the first in a series from the Morris Library discussing various types of sources you might come across in your research and how to evaluate them. If you're in a class where your instructor has assigned you a research project, there are a few key skills that they want you to develop. One of these skills is critical thinking, or the ability to analyze the information you come across and ask purposeful questions about how and why it was created and whether it's trustworthy. To get the most out of a research assignment, you shouldn't just be using the first few sources that come up when you type in your topic. Instead, as you look at each source, begin asking yourself some critical questions and then decide if it's something you want to use. While you'll have different requirements for different classes, there are a few filters that apply to most research situations and will help you determine if a source is credible or trustworthy. Author. Our first question is who wrote this source? More than finding the name on the document, you want to figure out why this person is trustworthy on this topic. Have they worked or studied in this field? Do they have other relevant experience that would otherwise qualify them to be trusted? If they have one of those, do they have any particular biases that might cause them to look at the issue from a particular angle? Have they written other related work in the past? If there isn't an author, it might be because they don't want to be attached to the work for whatever reason, which can be a warning sign, or it might be the format of the publishing organization, which leads us to the next element to look at. Publisher. Who is paying to put this information out there? Is it a news organization, a book publisher, an academic journal, or a website? Ask the same questions you did about the author. Why do we trust this publisher on this topic? What is their track record? And what biases might be present? For websites, one trick you may have heard before is to pay attention to the domain type, or whether the site ends with .com, .org, .edu, or .gov. Generally speaking, .edu, .org, and .gov are considered more trustworthy since .com's commercial usually exists to sell something. But there are exceptions to this rule. Some trustworthy news sites end with .com, there are some shady .org organizations out there, and you definitely wouldn't want to use a site from an elementary school which would end with .edu. Publication date. When was this information created or last updated? Have there been newer discoveries since that time that might make this source outdated? Think of a source on the use of social media written in 2010. That's only 10 years, but a lot has changed. Different subjects will have different cutoff dates, but in general, if you're going older than 15 years, you should have a good reason, such as presenting a historical perspective on a topic, or that it's an area that hasn't changed all that much in that time. And finally, we want to look at the information itself. If the source you're looking at refers to other works or experts, it should cite those sources just like you have to. If you want to be extremely thorough, you might also consider vetting those sources in a similar way to make sure this author has actually done good research. If they present any data, they should tell you how it was collected, and the presentation should be straightforward. Some sources will publish misleading charts or graphs to make you interpret the data a certain way, so be sure to actually read the numbers. And it's always a sign of a great source when they acknowledge any limitations or biases themselves. No study or source is going to be perfect, and acknowledging that shows that the people behind this information have thought carefully about what they are sharing and how they can improve going forward. So hopefully those questions have helped you get your critical thinking skills in gear. If you have questions about a particular source or anything else related to research, please ask your librarians. We are always happy to help.